the less code you ship to the browser, the better or the faster your initial load time will likely be. And this can be pretty significant when it comes to user satisfaction using your application as you only have a certain amount of time that a user is going to let a website load before just heading somewhere else because they think it's, you know, and they might perceive it as like kind of a scammy website that's taken a super long time to load or with our attention spans these days, move on to something else. So that initial load time is pretty dang important and it can be helpful to do a strategy called lazy loading here. I've covered lazy loading in React using Tanstack and just in basic React. I think I covered it a couple years ago, but today we're going to cover Next.js as there are just a couple of things that are different enough from just using like Create React app and a Tanstack that I think are worth covering here. So what we're going to do here is first kind of cover just a few concepts in the docs, but as we go, we're going to also go to this application here within VS Code and just show some examples of lazy loading. And you can see I already kind of have this set up with a slow component here. And I will also have this initial starter project linked in the description below if you want to clone this repo and then run npm install and npm run dev to also kind of follow along with me. But let's first start out with lazy loading in Next.js helps improve the initial loading performance of an application by decreasing the amount of JavaScript needed to render a route. So basically what I just mentioned, shipping less code to the browser initially is going to improve your initial loading performance. Now it allows you to defer loading of client components and important caveat here in Next.js in imported libraries and only include them in the client bundle when they're needed. For example, you might want to defer loading of a modal until a user clicks to open it. There are two ways you can do this in Next.js, dynamic imports with next forward slash dynamic or react lazy with suspense. By default, server components are automatically code split and you can use streaming to progressively send pieces of UI from the server to the client. I have a video on streaming in Next.js to where we use suspense and react lazy to do that. And I would highly recommend checking that out because that can also really help improve your performance as well. But lazy loading applies to just client components, but that doesn't necessarily mean you can't lazy load a server component because there might be reasons you want to do that, which we'll cover here in a second. So next dynamic is a composite of react lazy and suspense. It behaves the same way in app and pages directories. So here they show an example of how to lazy load, but let's just go over to our own example here. So I have my server running. I did npm run dev. And if we go to localhost 3000 here, you're going to see I have this very impressive application here to where we just have our homepage. And I will show you that in the code. We have our homepage right here. And then within our homepage, so we have a client component here as a homepage. And then we are rendering a client component here that is just a slow component that does this computation and returns this computation. We are going to go ahead and lazily load this. And really, even, even with this, like this small of kind of a contrived app, we're not going to see really performance benefits, but I can show you in the network tab how this is going to look if you are indeed code splitting correctly. So right now, if I go to the browser and I clear my console and I'm in my network tab here, and I just did right click inspect to open this here, open the network tab. If I do a refresh, you see I get a chunk for page.js, app pages, main hyphen app. So kind of just have these kind of main chunks here. But after we lazy load, we should see a separate chunk for this lazily loaded component here. So let's go ahead and do that. Instead of just doing this regular import here, we are going to say const slow component is equal to, and let me go back to the docs to remember the syntax. We need to call the dynamic function from next dynamic. And then we need to pass the dynamic function a function or a callback function 
in which we call the import function with the path to our component. I'm going to just copy this right here and paste that in and then make sure to import dynamic. So we're calling the dynamic function from next dynamic and then we're passing it an inline function in which we call import which is going to be given to us automatically and then we're going to pass the path to our component which of course isn't this it is actually going to be this so let me paste this in here as well now we have this slow component and we are lazily loading it here and let's go ahead and go back to a browser let's clear the console and now hit refresh and when we do that well we still see our page.js chunk our app pages main but now it looks like we have another chunk right here and if i click on it what you're going to see is that this chunk it actually contains slow component jsx so this is a chunk specifically for this code right here this slow component so if i come back here and we just comment out the the dynamic import and just import it regularly what we should see is that this chunk goes away so i'll clear the console i'll refresh we don't see that chunk anymore so that's telling me that when we import it like so with next dynamic here and i clear the console and i refresh we have this separate chunk so we are correctly lazily loading this component now in this example you're not going to see much of a difference in performance but if you had a component that really did render slowly and it just took a very long amount of time and it was becoming an issue lazy loading can be a way to solve it now i still got a couple things to show you regarding lazy loading but i do want to mention that i don't think it should be like your default like as developers here we we want to maximize our dollars per line of code read so we don't want to just do all this work to dynamically import components all the time and there are like computation costs to doing that as well so i think it's a much better idea to rather than just doing everything as a dynamic import and lazily loading it just solving a, spe a specific problem with lazy loading so if this really was like a very slow component to render and it just say it pulled in like its own lodash and this other graphics package and all this code just for this component well in that case yes lazily lazy load that on demand now something else that i think that is cool that you can do here is that say you want to like programmatically load this component based on some sort of user behavior so whether they hover over a certain link then maybe you load the component or maybe they click a button and you load it so we could do that as well and it's very straightforward so i'll just say const show comma set show is equal to use state and then we'll keep that as false and then all we need to do is we'll say show ampersand ampersand and then render our component so what we're seeing here is if show is true then render our slow component but if it's false don't render it which is also going to mean if it's false and we don't need to render this component it's also not going to load this chunk so what we can do here is i can have a button that just says show and then on click we can set our show value to not show so if it's false turn it to true if it's true turn it to false this should allow us to see this getting dynamically loaded when a user clicks this button and this could also be like hovering over a link or any kind of user behavior you could programmatically load different components which can really improve your user experience so let's clear the console let's refresh this and i don't see the chunk over here for this component because we're not showing it yet but if i click show we now see we render this component and we have this slow component being rendered and now if i do it again 
and I click show, you're going to see we don't get another chunk because we already loaded this chunk. So we're just kind of returning it from the cache now. But if I do a hard refresh of this page and I click show, you see we show this chunk or we load this chunk on demand when the user clicks this button. So that can be a really cool way to improve your performance. Now, a couple of other things here. So they kind of show this in this example here as well. But a couple of other things. So you can also skip server-side rendering. So when using React Lazy and Suspense, client components will be rendered by default in Next.js. So when we're using this dynamic import that is using React Lazy and Suspense, we can opt out of that being pre-rendered when doing this by passing a second argument to this dynamic function in which we pass an object and we set SSR to false, meaning don't pre-render this on the server side. So if you have a use case to where you don't want it to be pre-rendered, that's how you can do it here with this dynamic import or this lazy loading. Now, if you import server components, so as I mentioned earlier, server components will not be lazy loaded even if you use this lazy loading dynamic syntax. However, the client components that are children of the server component, they will be lazy loaded. So you might have a case to where you have a server component and then say within that server component, you have multiple client components that are very computationally expensive and maybe they pull in a lot of code and a lot of libraries and it would just be easier for you to just tell Next.js, hey, everything within this server component or all client components within this server component, I want you to lazy load those. Well, you could just then lazy load the server component and then all the client components within that server component, they're going to get their, their own chunk. That could be a use case to where you want to lazy load a server component, but the server component itself is not going to be lazy loaded just the client components within it, which is something that's important to keep in mind. It is kind of distinct to Next.js. Now you can also import external libraries on demand using import syntax. So say you want to use this Fuse.js library, but you only want to import that component or load that component dynamically when a user does something. Well, here you can use the import syntax, which you can see you don't need to import that anywhere within your component. You get that automatically, just like what we got here. We get this import automatically, but here you can await that import and then you can then use that imported library right within an event handler to dynamically import external libraries like Fuse.js for fuzzy search. So it says here, the module is only loaded on the client after the user types in the search input, which is a very cool feature and another thing that can really improve performance. So for external libraries like this, use the import syntax, await it, and then you have your import here. This would be similar to doing like import fuse from fuse.js at the top of your file, except this is saying only dynamically import this or load this when the user starts changing this input here. And then it uses fuse here and then sets the results. Pretty dang cool. Now we can also add a custom loader to our dynamic imports as a second argument to the dynamic fu function. We can pass an object as a loading property and that can be a function that returns our custom loader. So to show you this here, we can pass a second argument to this dynamic function, pass an object that has a loading property that is a function that just returns and we'll return an H3 that just says loading slow component. And then if we come back and I clear my console and I do a hard refresh and I click show, we're split second here, we should see loading slow component. So if I do this, you see, just for a split second, you see loading show component. And let me do this again. You see loading slow component just really quickly there. If it, I was pulling in a ton of code for this slow component, 
then that would show this this much better. I don't even think I need this like heavy, heavy computation result all that much, but that's how you can do it. All right. So you can render a custom loader by as a second argument that a dynamic function passing an object where you set the loading property to be a function that returns a custom loader component for that component that you are lazily loading. So hopefully that's clear. And then just, I believe one more thing that I want to touch on here is importing named exports. So if we did a named export here, so right now we're default exporting this. If we did just remove export default, and then we did export const slow component, and we tried to do this, I'm not sure if it will break the app or not, and it does. Element type is invalid. Received a promise that resolves to object module. Lazy element must resolve to class or function. So you're going to see that you get an error if you try to lazy load a non-default export. But the way that we can get around this is we can use our dynamic function, our input function, but then adding a dot then chain and rendering the function here. So what we need to do to modify this is if I go back to my page.js and I move this to a new line, I'm going to move my loading to a new line here as well. But after my import of this function, leave what I can do is just do dot then. And then I can say like module. And that's what mod stands for here. MOD, that's what they're saying within that module. What function do you want to import? And we want to import the dot and let me, I think it's just slow component, right? Yeah, slow component, slow component. And now I believe that this should work. So I refreshed, now I click show and I still get an error here. So maybe I messed something up here and I do see what I did here. I just weirdly like, didn't return a function in the dot then. So what we really need to do is pass a function to it. It accepts module and then it returns module dot the name of your component. So let's go ahead and see if this works now. So I'll refresh, I'll click show. And we do see this component now and we see that it loads this chunk. So we are lazily loading a named export here. All right. So we're basically saying import from this slow component module. And then in the dot then syntax, we're going to receive the module. And then we want to return whatever function in the module here that uh, we want to render here as this component. So in our case, since we typed slow component, that's what we need to return right here. If this was just named slow, and I try to import slow component, I think that this should break. Which now it's just kind of caught loading it because we don't actually have a slow component to, to render. So let me change this to module.slow because we've named it slow here. And if I come back, I refresh and I click show we do see the component as expected. That is all I wanted to cover here when it comes to lazy loading in Next.js. So I hope you found this video helpful. There's just a couple of extra things with Next.js lazy loading that I felt was worth an additional video. So thanks for tuning into this and I'll catch you in that next one.